Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Lamicia Downs, and I am currently a CTF teacher at House of Prayer Evangelistic Church. I am here to take and encourage you with some words that will help you get through the week. And I just want to thank Pastor Bernard Crawford and Sister, uh, Evangelist Prophetess Trina Crawford for just the opportunity to come before you and before this group to speak to our children. Let me go to the throne of God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you. We know that you have a plan for each and every one of our boys and girls that are part of Hope Center. We ask that these words will reach them, strengthen them, encourage them, that when nothing else makes sense, Jesus is the answer. We pray that their minds, heart, and soul will be able to hear what God is saying. We pray that their thoughts will be made whole by just hearing that Jesus is the answer. Thank you for this opportunity to take and guide your children to have a better relationship with you. I thank you, God, and I ask you that you would touch each and every one of the children that is a part of hope and all the children in our community and in the world. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So this song, Jesus is the Answer, is one of my favorite songs um, when I was growing up. I used to hum it all the time. And today's lesson is reflecting that very song, Jesus is the Answer. Jesus is the answer for our problems, for the things that are going on in the world. But many times we as human beings, as mankind, take and try to resolve things without God being in it. And that's absolutely not going to take and work. Nothing that man do without God is going to last. So today we're going to open up our books. I have some questions for you and I have some things that I want you to do. If you don't have your Bible, go grab it. And I also need you to grab your journal. You all should have journals where you should be able to take and write notes in. So go ahead and do that at this time. Press pause if you need to. And when you come back, we'll start with our lesson. All right. Got your Bible? Got your paper? Great. Today we're going to start off with a story. And I want to read it to you. And then I want you each to decide how this story is going to end. Okay? Great. Now. There was an old farmer who noticed a flock of birds in the middle of winter. They were cold and looking for shelter. A winter storm was on the way and they couldn't freeze to death. Now, the farmer knew he had a barn that was warm and would be able to provide a safe place to stay for the birds. So he opened up his barn doors and waited to see if the birds would fly in. But the birds were afraid and would not go in. And he had the way, he had to find a way to let the birds know or show them that they were going to be safe. He finally realized what he needed to do. How would you end this story? How do you want the story to end? It's important that you take and finish the story for me. So open up your journal and tell me, how would you take and figure out a way for the birds to follow the farmer inside the barn. And how would you take care of them? Finish the story for me. Great. Now, as you're doing that, if you need to press pause again, press pause so that you can do the assignment. Now, today I want to ask you guys a couple questions. If you were listening last week, you gave, were given a reading assignment. And the reading assignment was for you to read um, Romans 5, 6 to 11. And my question to you um, today is reflective of those uh, uh, passages. But because I know some of you might not have gotten to the assignment, I'm going to read Romans 5, 6 to 11, just as a recap. And then we can answer some questions in regards to it. So when we go to Romans 5, 6 and 11, there's a passage there that is talking about... Uh, Jesus Christ and what we need to know. So listen, here's what it says. For when you were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will die for one. Yet perseverance for a good man, some would even die or die for another. But God 
commanded his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us all. Much more than being new, uh, now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, that we also are joyful in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. That has a lot of big sentences and a lot of big words in it. I hope that you guys studied it so that you can answer some of the questions that I'm going to ask for you. So after reading the Romans 5, 6 to 11, there's a couple words in there that are really hard to understand. So one of the first ones that we run across when we read that scripture, it talks about um, us having strength in due time. Um, Christ died for the ungodly. What does that strength mean? That means that he builds us up. He encourages us with faith so that we are able to understand who he is and how how he died for us and why he died for us. There's another word, perseverance. Um, and that word we talked about a while back because we had it as part of our um, lesson. And um, it talks about just enduring, to take and um, do the right thing when there are lots of obstacles against you. And then the other one is um, commanded his love towards us. That means it's not a wishful list it's something that you should do it ought to have been done and Jesus did do it Jesus took and obeyed his father and he took and died on the cross there was um, reconciled that word right there means to put back in its rightful place to allow it to be made whole and sit where it is supposed to sit so all of these words in this um, in these verses are trying to allow us to comprehend how much Christ loved for us, even when we were doing wrong. So here's my question to you. Why would it be hard to die for a real bad person, someone who has taken and harmed you or sinned against you? Think about that. Here's your second question. How did God demonstrate his love for us? What did he do? These uh, memory verses and these scriptures are to take us to our memory verses. And our memory verses are, But God demonstrated his own love towards us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 and 8. Sinners. People who do things that displease the Christ. Right? That's a word that, that's the definition that we normally use um, so that you can understand. Anything or in anything that you do say or um, do say, do or say that displeases God. So as a sinner, we all have sinned because at some point in time we've either thought, said, or done something that has displeased God. No man is perfect. I wish that we could be perfect, but we are not. So, here we have, you have this, this, this act that Christ did. What was it? What did he do to demonstrate his love towards us? So once again, here's our memory verse. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, so here's another exercise that we're going to do. We are going to talk about how it is uncomfortable to deal with something that is heavy, something that is burdensome, something that causes us weight. And that is what sin is. I don't know if you've ever told a story to your mom and dad, if you've ever uh, did something and tried to hide it from them, but that becomes a burden, something heavy for you to carry. And then when you continue to lie, it adds another burden to you. So one of the things that we have to remember is that sin gets heavy. And I want to give you an example. For me to carry this little thing right here, it's kind of light. It's easy. And carrying one of them is probably not that difficult. But what if I had to carry this all the way through the church, all the way to my car, 
all the way here, all the way there, and then I have to carry another one. Now, one isn't that heavy, but now I have to carry two of them. And what if I had to carry it all around, all everywhere I have went? That's what sin is. Sin is a weight. It's a weight, it's extra stuff that we have to carry for the reason that we don't want to confess that we've lied. Sin gets heavy. And while the first sin comes easy, we might take and say it just because we don't want to get in trouble. We find ourselves in a position where if we tell one lie or we do one sin, normally there's others that follow right behind it. Why? Because sin gets heavy. Our scripture for today, we're going to go to John 3, 121. Grab your Bibles. John is in the New Testament. Go to chapter 3, and we're going to read from chapter 3, verse 1 through 21. And here we go. It's talking about a man named Nicodemus. And there was a man, in, uh, in, a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it willeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it come and whither it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knoweth not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up into heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so even the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that so whoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because of the deeds of evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, and neither come to the light, lest he, his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truly come from come to the light, that his deeds may be made manifested, that they are wrought in God. A lot, right? Yes. So here it is, a man that is listening to Jesus. His name is Nicodemus. And he is a ruler over the Jews. And he's inquiring of God, of Jesus, how, how does he get the opportunity to enter into the kingdom of God? And God explains to him that he has to be born again. And born again is a word that we use as Christians often. And a lot of time it does cause confusion. So let me make it very simple. When you have the desire to please God in your thoughts, actions, and deeds, 
you are desiring to have a relationship with Christ. And when you desire to have a relationship with Christ, you must confess all of the sins that you have done. You must take and believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You must take and ask for forgiveness and accept the forgiveness, and then you can be born again. Simple. Confess that you have sinned. Admit that Jesus Christ is Lord and God. Admit that he was a, a man that walked on the earth. And then ask him to forgive you and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Those are the steps so that you can be born again. Then you get baptized in water and of the Spirit. When you get baptized in water, it's when the pastor takes and baptizes you or somebody, a minister, baptizes you in water, and then you're baptized. To be baptized in the Spirit means that you receive the Holy Ghost and you allow the Holy Ghost to dwell in you. So through this passage, it's breaking down the entrance way to enter into the kingdom of God. And it's important that you know, because Jesus is the answer. If we pray, we talk, and we take and read his word, he is the answer to every problem that we have. It doesn't seem like it, you, we can take and find the answer to new technology in the Bible. It's in here. It doesn't seem like we have the answer to people beating up on us at school and having a, um, giving us a hard time and bullying us. The answer is in the Bible. Why? Because Jesus is the answer. You cannot forget that. He is the answer. He can give you a solution to every problem that you have. He is the solution to every problem you have. So, as we close out today, there's one more thing that I want to go over with you. And that's the assignment for next week. Our assignment for next week is, well, yeah, let's go to the assignment for next week. As we review over our memory verse, which is God, but God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5 and 8. Um, take a look at the Bible verse in your own Bible and practice it several times through the week. Why? Because memorizing this scripture is going to help you as you learn the word of God. This will help you to remember the verse and it will also help to reinforce what you've learned in Sunday school. As you do your homework assignment, which is to read Matthew 8, 23 through 27, it is a very familiar passage, but read it again several times and think carefully about it. And once you finish this, write down your answer to the questions below and be prepared to answer them next week. So here's the questions I'm going to ask you in regards to Matthew 8, 23 and 27. How did Jesus tell the disciples they had little faith? Why did Jesus tell the disciples they had little faith? Next part. How is faith related to not being afraid and being afraid of what? So once again, read Matthew 8, 23 through 27, answers those two questions. And here's my prayer for you. God Almighty, you are a wonderful and merciful God. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who came to earth and gave up his life so that I can live. Your grace is more than enough. Amen. That is the prayer that I want you to pray daily if you take and um, view this uh, lesson. And I want you to ask God to give you the strength and the courage to do what he desires from you. Blessings. Have a great day.